starting the recording. So uh, it's an airline with a single fleet type. Or as we said, uh, you know, we were thinking of coloring uh, the links in the schedule with the different colors where every color uh, represents a fleet type. So now we are still in the case uh, of an airline having single color, single fleet type, type but uh, potentially several aircraft. And here is again our fleet assignment problem formulation. So in the input, uh, we have the schedule. In the schedule, for every flight, we have the necessary information, origin, destination, departure time, maybe number of passengers, maybe other things if we need them. Uh, and uh, so, so that's uh, the demand. That's what we have to serve. And we have the resources of the airline. In this case, uh, the fleet of the airline, certain number of aircraft. Uh, in this case, all the aircraft are of the same type. Well, maybe it's Boeing 747, and we have three, but potentially we could have more than the other fleet types. But now we are still considering the problem of airline with a single fleet type or single color, and we want to assign the colors or the aircraft types to the different links in the schedule. And just as with the airline that has only one aircraft, you may say, well, but there is really no problem at all. If you only have one color, only have one fleet type, then of course what you do is you assign the only available fleet type to all the links in the schedule. And that's true, but uh, still there are quite a few interesting questions and even more interesting questions uh, than we had when we had a single aircraft. So first and foremost, the feasibility. Can we fly all the flights in the schedule with you know, the one and only uh, fleet type, possibly with two or three or more aircraft? Or in other words, given the available aircraft that we have, do we have enough to implement the schedule? And uh, then there are also other questions, sorry, that uh, we may want to answer. Uh, we want to think, well, so maybe we don't have enough aircraft uh, to fly all the flights in the schedule. So we may start thinking, but how many do we want? How many do we need in order to fly all the flights? So uh, I, I put it as kind of counting, but it's also the same as uh, kind of optimization. You're trying to minimize the number of aircraft that you need in order to fly all the flights. And uh, this kind of optimization is something new. We didn't have it uh, when we had only one aircraft. What we did have back then is this kind of optimization. So this is the symbol, uh, the, the, yes, the same, uh, well, not necessarily uh, simple, but it's, it's the same question that we asked ourselves in the simpler case when we only had one aircraft. Okay, we cannot fly all the uh, links that we have to. Uh, let's try to fly as many as possible. This question is, of course, uh, still relevant even if you have more than one uh, aircraft. So this optimization is kind of old. We also saw it uh, previously when we had airline with a single aircraft. This optimization question is uh, new. Now we are allowed to use more than uh, one aircraft, uh, try to minimize the number of aircraft we need in order to fly all the schedule. And uh, in general, these two kinds of optimization uh, problems are very common uh, to anything in operations, uh, research, logistics, uh, well, whatever you, you call it. Uh, you have the demand that you have to satisfy, in our case, the flights flown, and you have certain resources, in our case, aircraft. And uh, if your resources are not enough to match the demand, uh, then uh, you can ask two kinds of questions. First is trying to decrease the demand. Well, actually it's this one. When you're trying to uh, decrease the demand and uh, serve as much of the demand with the available resources as possible. And this second type is uh, the kind of resource augmentation. So how many resources or how much resources do you need in order to serve all the demand? And we will solve uh, both of these problems uh, for the fleet assignment 
but uh, again, I just wanted to point out that it's almost a pretty general uh, setting. Okay, but uh, first let's uh, look just at feasibility. So, you know, the question of given the available aircraft and the schedule that we have to fly, can we do that? We will uh, do it by using the fleet assignment mathematical program. And let me again bring up the mathematical program for fleet assignment for the airline with a single aircraft. Okay, so this is the familiar thing that uh, you have seen in the previous lectures that we have worked out in the previous lectures. So yeah, you, you remember what are the uh, variables, Excel correspond uh, to the links, access cor correspond to the uh, uh, remaining overnight arcs. Sorry, I didn't specify what XL is, but hopefully you remember what it is. Yes, XL should be zero or one and represent the links. Anyway, so this is something you have seen. This is the fleet assignment mathematical program for the airline with a single aircraft. Now question, what do we have to change here and how in order to handle the case of an airline having, you know, an aircraft? So th this is for the airline with a single aircraft with one aircraft and my question is where in this mathematical program do we have this one that corresponds to the number of aircraft so just look you know in the wrong that's correct right just looking over this well there is no one in here no one in here oh here is number one why is it one? Well, because we only had one aircraft. And uh, so maybe this is the right place to look at, to change something in order to get the mathematical program for the airline that has more than one, that has an aircraft. And that's exactly what it is. We are changing this one to N where n is uh, the uh, number of aircraft available, everything else stays the same. I mean, the flow conservation constraints, well, they still hold. The total number of aircraft that fly in should be equal to the total number of aircraft that fly out of an airport. Uh, yeah, just repeating myself again and again. So this is the total number of aircraft departing from the airport S. This is the total number of aircraft that are destined to airport S and they should be equal. Well, that should be true no matter whether you have only one uh, aircraft or five or N or many. So this should stay, it's the same constraint. Same thing about this constraint. At any departure, remember what this uh, constraint represents? At any departure, you shouldn't uh, depart more aircraft than there are available aircraft. So this summation is, again, to repeat, uh, all the aircraft that have departed from airport S by the time T, and this summation is all the aircraft that are available for departure at the same airport at the same time, and the left-hand side shouldn't exceed the right-hand side. So these things, they all stay the same. The only change is in this constraint, and more specifically, this number. Now, instead of one, it is n. And that's kind of the beauty of it. Uh, I mean, the, I, I understand it was a steep learning curve to get to the fleet assignment mathematical program for the airline with a single uh, aircraft, in particular, all this notation and other things. Uh, but starting from now, things will be easy. So if you got through this, then uh, everything else should be easy. And again, I, I understand it may be one of the most mathematically heavy courses that uh, you have had uh, so far and maybe will have in your program but uh, that's what it is this is why you studied mathematics and optimization and other things uh, to apply them uh, in well, different applications particularly in the fleet assignment so if uh, your 
comfortable with things like this and especially with larger things like this, everything else is easy. So this is the fleet assignment mathematical program for the airline uh, with a single fleet type and potentially many aircraft. Any questions on this one? Okay, so uh, we now returning back to our general questions that we may ask uh, about uh, the fleet assignment. Uh, we now know how to answer the feasibility question. Can we fly our schedule with our aircraft? We formulate it as a mathematical program and well, feed it to whatever solver we are not concerned with solving in this course. So now that we uh, solved the feasibility problem, let us look at the optimization problem. And uh, again, I'm just kind of restating them uh, here. There are two dual problems. They are called dual problems to, uh, they're, they're dual to each other. One uh, is, uh, well, in this case, the, this time the first one comes, the minimizing the number of planes used, minimizing the number of resources. And uh, the second one is maximizing the demand or uh, given the available resources. And we will look at these problems uh, one by one. So uh, the first one, we want to minimize the number of aircraft that we use in order to serve all the links. So how would you use this mathematical program in order to optimize the number of aircraft used? What uh, what would you do? What could you do? There are several answers, by the way, there are several ways how we can do it. So remember that we know how to test the feasibility of uh, a given schedule with a given number of aircraft. So what we can do is to just search for the minimum number of aircraft this minimum number n until uh, this program is feasible okay so you may start from n equals one and if you substitute n equals one maybe you solve the problem oops it's infeasible one plane is not enough well then you set n equals two and again solve this uh, program and uh, it says well maybe two planes is not enough and then you can start uh, doing the search or well, continue doing the search increment n until you have reached uh, smallest n uh, that gives you a feasible solution okay so you increase one by one well we can also increase in binary one two four eight uh, whatever uh, until uh, you zoom in uh, on the smallest n that gives you a feasible solution so that's one uh, possibility Another possibility is uh, to use the objective function. Again, our basic program for the uh, uh, fleet assignment is a feasibility program. We don't have the objective function here. And uh, with the optimization, we want to minimize something. So we can add the objective function, you know, minimize something. Uh, we just have to think what we want to minimize and uh, in this case we want to minimize the number of planes used where is the number of planes well we know here it is it's in this constraint so what we can do is we can turn this constraint into an objective function so instead of saying well we should not use more than n aircraft we can say well uh, we don't know how many aircraft uh, we have to use. Instead, we want to minimize the total number of aircraft that we use, and here is the expression for it. So we want to minimize the total number of aircraft used subject to all these constraints. Okay. So that's the solution to the first type of the optimization problem. And uh, the second type of the optimization problem. Now we are not allowed to increase our resources. So N is fixed. We are given certain number of aircraft. The airline doesn't want to buy uh, anymore. Uh, how do we maximize the number of flights flown? Oh, 
course, we add some kind of objective function. Yes, so we maximize, uh, yeah, not just x l, but uh, maximize the sum of x l. Okay. I mean, this is the same thing that uh, we did uh, for the airline with a single aircraft. So yeah, we maximize the sum of XL. And yeah, thank you for the uh, answer yes, in, in the chat. I understand it's hard to write summation and other things. Yes, we are maximizing sum of XL. Okay, so uh, now we went through all the questions we could ask uh, ourselves for the airline with a single fleet type. We know how to check the feasibility. Can we fly uh, all the flights? And we know how to solve the two kinds of optimization problem, um, maximizing the number of flights flown or minimizing the number of aircraft used in order to fly all the flights. So we are done with this case. Uh, any questions on it before we turn to the most general case? Okay, if not, then, well, let's uh, do it. This is our final goal, an airline with multiple aircraft types and potentially several aircraft of uh, each type. So this is the fleet assignment uh, problem as uh, we started with. Yes, we have schedule certain information for every flight and we have the resources which is the fleet well different type aircraft and uh, you know maybe the different number of uh, different types of uh, aircraft and in the output as usual we want to assign the colors or the fleet types to all the links in the schedule and uh, for once this problem is no longer void so now we really have to solve Okay, so uh, of course we will reuse a lot uh, the things that we had uh, when we considered airline with a single aircraft, a single fleet type. So we again uh, will turn the schedule into a network, except that this time we will have a separate network for every fleet type. So here I'm saying per color, but remember I'm using colors also for uh, the fleet types. So for every fleet type, we will have a separate network. So one network for one fleet type, one network for another, one network for another one. Uh, in this running example, when I will be explaining things, I will use only three colors or three um, fleet types, but uh, in general, we will have an arbitrary number and, and this is where we will uh, get in the final fleet assignment mathematical problem. So just as before, we create in the same type of network, you know, the links for the flights, the remaining overnight arcs for remaining overnight, but one network per fleet type. Now these networks are not exactly the same for the different uh, fleet types, for different colors. And there are several reasons for that. So, you know, now when we have a flight that goes from certain origin to certain destination, uh, the time of flight may be different, but also the turnaround type uh, time uh, may be different for different aircraft. So uh, these uh, arrows, these links, may end at different times in the destination airport. The, the time may depend on the fleet type, even if they all started at the, the same time in the origin. Uh, moreover, in principle, certain arcs uh, may just be absent in certain networks uh, because of operational constraints. You know, like uh, maybe your certain fleet type is too small in order to serve all the projected number of passengers, or maybe the flight cannot fly that far between origin and destination, or maybe there are certain things that are infeasible for certain fleet types, either at origin or destination, like short runway, whatever curfews, and other things. So certain uh, arcs may be absent from certain uh, networks. Uh, I'll check the, uh, yes, so there's a question, why do all aircraft start um, at the same time? Well, they don't have to. So I, I guess this is about the, the previous uh, slide. Uh, over here, I had, uh, 
I had all the aircraft uh, starting at the same time. They don't have to. What I meant is that even if uh, they start at the same time, they may still end at different times, uh, depending on, uh, on the fleet time. Yes, uh, so even. But in general, also, if you do have the schedule, you know, the schedule most often is, it specifies you want to fly out at a certain time. Uh, so it also makes sense that they uh, would start. But anyway, yeah, they, they as I said, uh, these networks, they are all kind of spawned by the same schedule, uh, but they don't have to be the same. And this is one reason why we're really uh, talking about three in this case three or more generally as many networks as uh, we have uh, fleet types and i will mention it uh, later when we look at the mit uh, mathematical program for fleet assignment but uh, this is something that uh, i do in this course in uh, other courses they don't have separate network for for different fleet i think it's uh, a bit misleading but we do okay so one network per fleet type. What happens uh, with our variables? So remember in this monochromatic case or the case when we had only one uh, fleet type, uh, we had this variable for every link, XL. It was either zero or one, depending on whether we fly the link or not. So this is what we used to have. What we have now is that we have, well, potentially, uh, the same link in all the networks or the networks for all the uh, fleet types and now this link is characterized not only by what it is not only by l but also by the fleet type so in other words i wanted to say in in simpler words but i'm not sure if it's simpler or not uh, right now we will and it's actually starting from now, we will have two indices for every variable. Okay, so we used to have a variable with a single index which represents the link. Now we have two indices for every variable. The first index represents the link as before. The second index represents the fleet type. Why? Because now we have uh, the link kind of multiplied. So the link may be present potentially in the networks of all the fleet types. So in every uh, network or for every network, we will have this same type of variable. It will be a variable on a link, just as before. So no change in here. But uh, the change is that uh, the variable is now indexed by two indices. First index corresponding to the link, second corresponding to the fleet type. The mean of the variable is the same. So it is one if this link is flown by this fleet type and zero otherwise. So the only extra thing is this extra index due to the fleet type. So those were the variables for the links, for the flights. Same thing about the ROM arcs. So we used to have uh, RON arc and the variable on it representing the, the aircraft standing overnight at a certain airport. And there was no question of what fleet type it is because we only had a single fleet type. Now when we have different fleet types, we will have this remaining overnight arc in the network for every fleet type for the same airport S. And consequently, we will have the remaining overnight variable having two indices. The first index as before representing the airport, the second representing the fleet type. Same thing as uh, with the links uh, and the variables on them. The first one, the first index is the same as before, the second representing fleet type. And the meaning is the same. The variable x S for a certain fleet type represents the number of aircraft of that fleet type which stay overnight at this airport. Okay, so those are the variables. What about the constraints? Let's recall what constraints we had for the airline with a single aircraft. We had three types of constraints. 
well, the flow conservation constraints, the non-negativity constraints, and the sizing constraints. Guess what? Now we will have them per fleet type. So for every fleet type, we will have the same type of constraints. So for this, for red fleet type or for fleet type A, we will have all the same constraints, except that we are adding the index every, everywhere. So all the variables are getting the extra index. Everything is getting the extra index. I'm not underlining all of them, but you just see that you're getting the extra index, uh, which represents this uh, particular fleet type. But all the same constraints, uh, they remain. So I don't know, let's look at this constraint. Uh, it said that total number in should equal to total number out. Well, for a certain fleet type, total number of aircraft in should equal to total number of aircraft out. For a certain fleet type and a certain departure time, the total number of aircraft that have departed by this time of this fleet type should not exceed the total number of aircraft of this fleet type that are available. And the sizing constraint, the total number of aircraft of this fleet type should not exceed the total number of aircraft of this fleet type that we have. So we have a separate network for every fleet type and all the constraints that we had before, they still stay in. The only change is this extra index. Uh, well, I would say that just looking at this thing with the double indices and many other things at once could be overwhelming, but hopefully with this you know, gradual approach that we have first studied, uh, these simpler things, now we are just adding the index, the extra index uh, that uh, represents the fleet type, but all the constraints remain the same. So we have the same sets of constraints for every fleet type that we have. Those are the flow constraints per color, per fleet type. Now the new thing, something that we didn't have before when we considered the airline with a single fleet type, is uh, this gluing constraint, the constraint that kind of goes between uh, the fleet types. Good in time. Uh, so uh, now for every link, we want to say that it should be flown by exactly one fleet type. So don't fly uh, this link by, you know, by two different fleet types or you know, two different aircraft. So this constraint, uh, which says uh, what it should say, uh, you know, the variable corresponding to one fleet type plus the variable corresponding to the other fleet type and to the other fleet type on the same link, same link, those uh, all variables should sum up to one. And that's the only new thing in comparison to the uh, program for the aircraft with a single. The next thing that we will have, um, uh, well, kind of new, even though we already touched a bit on that, is that we will add the objective function. So in our fleet assignment, uh, well, at least the, in the basic uh, mathematical program for fleet assignment uh, for the airline with a single fleet type, didn't have the objective function. We were adding the objective functions later, it's kind of extra thing. So here we want to add the objective function from the very beginning. Here I mean when we have um, uh, airlines with different fleet types. So what does the objective function represent? Well, as usually, it either represents some kind of cost that uh, you're trying to minimize, uh, or you, you could think of maximizing the profit. Uh, we will stay with the cost. It's uh, more common uh, in the fleet assignment mathematical program. All mathematical programs for fleet assignment I saw, they were really minimizing the cost. And uh, well, we don't go into the details of what uh, the cost represents. Uh, usually there are quite a few things that go into the cost fuel mostly, uh, or landing fee. Or I think the crew uh, is uh, the biggest cost after the fuel. Yeah, some, something that you need to repair after the flights and so on. So uh, cost is something that uh, 
well, we subtracted. Revenue is something that uh, you can add. One way or another, we assume that you have this number, CLF, for every leg, for every flight, and for every fleet type, you know this number, CLF. So for every link, L in your schedule, or for every leg in your schedule, for every fleet type, F, uh, that uh, you have available, you know how much it will cost you if you fly this link, L, with this fleet type, F. Cost meaning that uh, it also includes the possible revenue. So uh, now what you want to minimize is the total cost, and the total cost is given by this formula. Yes, you're multiplying the cost for flying link L with uh, fleet type F by the variable, which is, you remember, 0 or 1, depending on whether you do fly or do not fly this link with the fleet type F. Well, as usual, if you don't fly, then uh, your variable is zero, so you don't count uh, this uh, towards your objective function. If you do fly the link with the, the, uh, with the fleet type F, then you do count CLF towards the total cost. So that's the objective function. And lo and behold, this is what we wanted to get to. This is the culmination of uh, the fleet assignment lecture and uh, in general the fleet assignment mathematical program this is the thing that uh, you will have well, already have in your homework and in your exam stated up front and this is our uh, mathematical program for fleet assignment and uh, hopefully you understand what different things there mean you don't have to memorize it uh, it's not that you know you have to wake up in the middle of the night and be able to write all these constraints and all the variables and other things. No, it will be with you on the homework and also on the exam, and uh, especially now when you're allowed to use anything you want uh, on the exam. So the important thing is to understand uh, what different things here stand for. So uh, a bit of a new notation that uh, I haven't explicitly introduced before, but which is introduced now and will stay with us. So the set of fleet types will be denoted by capital F. Uh, capital S will denote the set of airports. I might have mentioned it before, but now it's already also stated uh, explicitly. And uh, yes, so LF, that's something we had, the link in the network for fleet type F. And SF, we know what that is. That's remaining overnight arc for airport S in the network for fleet type F. Um, yeah, I'm sorry for the, the, right here, there is also the slide numbers. I, I added slide numbers uh, because I started teaching online uh, so that uh, it would be easier to refer to the slides. But anyway, so it's in the network for F, uh, for small f. Uh, and, and everything else, uh, yes, uh, X, L, F are these binary variables representing whether you fly link L by fleet type F on off or not. X, S, F, the number of aircraft staying overnight uh, at airport S, number of aircraft of fleet type F. Well, there could be more than one now, so it's still integer, but larger than zero. And all these constraints. So if you understand what's, what is what here, then uh, you should be good. And again, among the constraints, uh, there are, well, some of the constraints are kind of operational, uh, maybe some flights uh, just not possible to do with certain fleet uh, types. So, uh, but uh, more importantly is that the constraints are really of two types. The first uh, are these three constraints, and uh, they are the flow constraints. They are really have the same constraints for every fleet type F. So the same set of constraints, all these constraints you have for every fleet type F. And uh, then in addition, there is this second constraint, one per link, and it's intertype. It's the only place where the different types or the networks for different types or whatever. That's the only place where the fleet types interact. So up here, 
uh, well, this is just a network and the flow per fleet type. It is here when they interact and influence each other. Okay, so let's see, we have three minutes uh, left. Uh, the next uh, thing I want uh, to do after we have gone through the um, fleet assignment mathematical program is to look at problem three from homework one. So uh, I will bring it up here. Uh, well, that's homework one and uh, somewhere here there is problem number three. Uh, we would need uh, more time than the remaining three minutes in order to solve them. So what I suggest we do is uh, that over the break you read uh, the problem statement. Well, either from here from the screen or just uh, open it up uh, in your browser. Whatever works uh, better for you. And I will pause the recording and we will reconnect um, at uh, 2.15 recording. So. Uh, I'm now sharing uh, my screen from the tablet uh, where I have both the problem uh, that we are looking at, this one, here is the problem uh, formulation, and the mathematical program for the fleet assignment. And we will try to solve this problem. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let me ask you the question, do you understand the statement of the problem? If not, uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, well, if not, uh, ask me questions about the statement. It's basically, yes, you need to take somehow into account the fact that you cannot uh, have uh, too many aircraft overnight uh, in certain airports. Uh, Yes, I, uh, so I, I came up with these uh, problems, you know, maybe like five or more year, more than five years back when uh, riots in different places around the world uh, were the hot topic. Of course, now we have a different uh, hot uh, topic around the world, so we can come up with different kinds of uh, uh, problems for the fleet assignment. I'm quite sure that as the airlines come out uh, and start uh, serving customers again, fleet assignment will be a hot topic for them. Anyway, so this time we are trying to bound the number of aircraft staying overnight somewhere. And uh, as usual, you may start from looking at uh, this uh, table, which you have to fill in anyway, and uh, think what you would want to do. Would you want to add new variables, new constraints, modify the constraints, modify the objective function? Uh, what would be some things that you might want to do for this problem? That's in general a good place to start from. Modify the constraints, so do something with the constraints at least. Yeah, so objective function, I mean, usually if you want to minimize or maximize something, that's what you deal with. Uh, yes, adding new variables, maybe you shouldn't add new variables before you feel the need to do so. So you should do something with the constraints. Uh, whether you're modifying the standard constraints uh, or adding new, uh, let's see that, but yes, we, we would uh, work with the constraints. The next thing that uh, you may or maybe even should ask yourself is uh, whether our program, well, this one, the standard thing, whether it has enough notation for you to express everything you want to express in this uh, problem, in the problem at hand. And remember that if some notation is not present in our standard program, in this thing, uh, then uh, you have to introduce this notation. It's, it's okay. Uh, introducing new notation is okay. Our program is not meant to cover all possible notation in all possible problems that you may encounter. Uh, but you have to describe the notation. Okay, so uh, we would want to work with the constraints. And uh, we 
may need to introduce notation. So I'm reading the chat message. Uh, modify the constraints for the Air Force in the Rhone province. That's right. So the sum of all fleet types staying overnight is three or less per airport in that region. So before I answer the full uh, your question in full, uh, I want to see whether it's per airport or all together. I think it is in all airports. Okay. Uh, I, I see that you could have read in. So what I meant by all is meaning overall over all the airports. But I understand uh, it could also be read as if I'm saying in each airport in Rome. No, so this time I, I want the uh, overall. But uh, anyway, yes, so as you say in chat, uh, we want to modify, and I'm not sure if we want to modify the, const uh, modify the constraints for the airports. So by the constraints for the airports, you probably mean this thing. Uh, the sizing constraint. And uh, I don't think we should uh, mess up too much with it because all this constraint is saying is that you shouldn't use overall more aircraft that uh, you have of this fleet type. So, you know, maybe these are your airports in the Rhone province. By the way, now is the good uh, time to introduce notation for it. R, maybe. So these are in the Rhone province. And these are also your, all your other airports. And uh, well, you fly here and there between airports in Rhone and uh, otherwise. And each of these airports has its remaining overnight arc. And when we count the remaining overnight uh, aircraft, we count everywhere, both in the Rhone province and elsewhere. So this constraint, which is really about counting all the air craft staying overnight in all the airports, I think this constraint should stay in. So I wouldn't really modify that. But indeed, we should work somehow with the, well, remaining overnight aircraft. So maybe we add a new constraint. So temporarily, X here, well, X may stand for no, so I will put yes here temporarily. Now, now I'm reading sum over r less than three. Right. So uh, now that uh, we have, I'll bring it back the notation. R is the airports in the Rome province. So yes, now we are trying to sum uh, over r of x r f. Uh, it's almost correct. You're on the right track. So we want to count all the aircraft staying overnight at these airports in their own province. So we should be looking at these variables remaining overnight. Yeah, so the next question is usually, are we, uh, for our problem, are we looking at these variables that correspond you know, to links, uh, or are we looking at these variables that correspond to the own part? And uh, I think you understand that in this case, we want uh, to uh, look at these ones, the ones for the remaining overnight. So I'm trying to not to delete everything, but rather to just undo a few. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I have to clear everything. So uh, we want to write the expression for the total number of aircraft that stay overnight in the airports in their own province and we want to say that this expression is at most three. That's correct. Now how do we write the expression for the total number of aircraft staying in uh, the Rhone province in airports in R? Well total is probably sum and uh, what are we summing? I guess we are summing these things the remaining overnight variables, X, S, F, but we are not summing over all airports. So we don't want to take into account these airports which are outside their own province. We only want to do the summation over the airports which are in R, in their own province. Okay? So, we don't change this 
to x, r, f, or anything, it's still the same thing. The only thing, uh, the variable is the same. The only thing that we are changing is uh, the range of the summation. We are no longer summing up over all uh, airports, over all stations. We are only summing over these stations that are in the wrong province. So we introduce, I will clear up everything. So we introduce new notation, air airports in Rome. And we add a new constraint, sum. And now the sum goes only over the airports in R. S is in R. Uh, you can use this, or you could also use a thing like this. X belongs to R. You know how clear I am. S belongs to R. Doesn't matter. S in R is good. Right. So exactly as, as I say in chat, we only look at S in the ROM in R area. X S F if it moves free. So that's our new constraint. This is the answer. Okay. So questions about that. So yes, you all were on the right track. Yes, we should look at the airports in their own province. We should introduce notation for them. Uh, and uh, this says that for every airport, okay, uh, my bad, I'm sorry, we are not done yet. So if I could erase just this, uh, frame, I, I would do that, but uh, I don't know how to do this. So I will erase everything and we'll rewrite this thing. So this represents uh, the total number of aircraft of fleet type F that stay in the Iran province, right? And we want to make sure that the total number of the aircraft staying overnight in these airports doesn't exceed three, not for a particular fleet type. So what should we do now in order to have the expression for total number of aircraft of all possible fleet types that stay overnight in R? So again, this summation is only going over S, and hence it represents the number of aircraft of fleet type F that is staying overnight. So yes, we should use the double sum and sum also over all fleet types. And you can write the summation either as an index next uh, to the summation sign or below the summation sign, that doesn't matter. In fact, in this particular case, the summation over F goes over the full set capital F. So it's also okay not to indicate it at all over what we are uh, summing, but you can also indicate that we are summing over all fleet types. So yes, this thing represents the overall uh, number of aircraft of all fleet types that stay overnight in Rome. And we want this thing to be smaller than three. Okay, so this is the solution. So all fleet types and the airports in R, we are summing up the remaining overnight arcs for them. So these are the airports outside of Rome, these are the airports in Rome, and we don't want to do the summation like this. We only want to do the summation like this, and moreover, we want to do it for every fleet type. So there is a network for another fleet type, network another fleet type and this is the second summation so for all fleet types we have to do the summation okay any questions about this solution so uh, before we go into uh, the second problem into part so part B 
let's uh, let me keep this solution as it is. So the solution to part A, sum of the F in F, S in R, X, S, F should not exceed three. Uh, so here we're saying that we want uh, the total number of aircraft of all fleet types staying in uh, the airports in R to not exceed three. Uh, a couple of questions. So yes, we have added new constraints. So we have to fill the table. Did we add new variables? Well, I don't see any. We added new notation. R is the airports in RON, and we have to describe it. But uh, that's not variables, it's just new notation. So we didn't add new variables. Yep, that's correct. Uh, did we modify the standard constraints? No, these all remained intact. And we didn't add the objective function. Okay. So that's the solution. Before we go, uh, still, before we go to problem 3B, so if instead of all airports, I wanted uh, to have not more than three planes at each airport, then uh, what would we do? Have a single sum. Uh, of, that's correct. A single sum over what? Over fleet types or over airports? Right. So if we just write the single sum over fleet types, but not the airports, then we would have uh, the so this would represent the total number of aircraft staying at station S and we would want to be it at most three, right? And so this would be the number of aircraft that stay in overnight run at S, just the summation of a fleet type, that's right. Now a question, over here, when we were solving the version where we wanted to bound the total number of aircraft in all the airports. How many constraints did we have? So how many constraints did we add? So we added this constraint. Yes, that's correct. There is only one constraint. One constraint, and that's it, for all the airports. We were summing up over all the airports. So one constraint, you would have to indicate in the solution, I'm adding this constraint. Over here, when we want to bound the number of uh, aircraft in each airport, how many constraints are we adding? Yes, depending on how many airports. So as many as there are airports. I could use the shorthand notation like this, which well, this is really the number of elements in R, but uh, anyway, that, sorry, not good. it doesn't uh, matter what notation you, you use, you have to say we are adding one constraint per airport. So we're doing it for, for every airport S in R. So remember, uh, you have to indicate when you're adding new constraints, how many you have added. You either say, well, I add only one constraint, or I add one constraint per airport. So you're either doing it like this, or you saying it in words, doesn't matter. So you may say one constraint per airport in R or whatever. Or you may say I'm adding that many, or you may say I'm adding as many, as many constraints as there are airports. Uh, so it doesn't matter in what way you indicate it, but you have to specify. Okay, I think uh, we, are done with 3a any questions about it so if not let's scroll to problem 3b 
I don't know if you had a chance to read through it, uh, but uh, well, if you haven't, don't uh, bother doing it now. So basically, uh, now you can stay with as many aircraft as you want, uh, but you have to pay. So you have to pay 1,000 for every narrow body jet and you have to pay 2000 for every wide body jet which by the way uh, does make sense i mean not only in this situation that i mocked up in uh, this particular problem in general of course uh, there are fees for aircraft staying overnight at airports and uh, yeah the fees depend on the fleet type so it's okay to add uh, that in general to the objective function so it's a pretty natural problem. Anyway, well now we have uh, this modification that uh, we have to pay for keeping the aircraft uh, at the different airports. Uh, how do we solve this problem? So let's say that yeah, the, this notation that R is the set of airports is with us. Maybe we'll have to add some other notation. Right, so you, as you're rightly saying, we should, okay, so looking at this table, adding variables, adding constraints, modifying constraints. No, maybe we should look at the objective function uh, while adding to the objective function. So we, uh, we still keep the original objective function, this thing, whatever we have to pay for flying over the links, but we will be adding certain things to this objective function. Specifically, we will be adding the cost for staying at the different airports in RON. So how do we specify the total cost? Well, we will pay 1,000 for every aircraft of narrow body type. So somehow we have to express the total number of aircraft of narrow body type that stay overnight at RON. So uh, how do we do that? And uh, one thing is, do we really have enough of notation in our program to, you know, single out wide body jets from narrow body jets. Doesn't look like we have any narrow bodies or wide bodies in our program. We only have this set F of all the fleet types. So maybe one good thing to do here is to introduce some extra notation, maybe N for the narrow body and W for the wide body, for the narrow and wide. Okay, so, so both of them are the uh, fleet types and both of them are subsets of F. Well, you don't have to really worry too much about this notation, but uh, introducing the notation for the narrow and wide bodies seems like a good idea. And then as you're saying in the chat, yes, use the same sum as before, but specify the aircraft types. So yes, uh, same sum as before, let me try to write it up. We had a double sum. Uh, so S was in R, X, S, F. And this double sum that I wrote right now uh, was uh, giving you the total number of aircraft of all fleet types. So if I put F, capital F here, then I would be summing up for all fleet types. That's what we did before. And now instead of F, since we want to only single out the narrow body jets for which we are paying the 1000, I would say F in N, where N is this new notation for the narrow body aircraft. Okay, so again, this whole thing is the total number of narrow body aircraft that stay overnight in R. And we pay in 1000 
per each. So this is how much we are paying altogether for the narrow body chest. And similarly for the wide bodies, we are summing over all these types in W, over all wide bodies, and over all airport in R, we are summing how many stays overnight X, S, F, and all these variables. So this is the solution. We didn't add any new variables, I think. No, we didn't. We introduced new notation. That's fine. No new constraints. Didn't modify the standard constraints, but yes, we used, well, kind of, as you said, the same sum as before, but separately for the narrow bodies and the wide bodies. And since we didn't have the notation for the narrow and wide bodies, well, we introduced it here. So, done. Okay, any questions on uh, this? So if not, I'll pause your recording. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we are done, uh, more or less. I mean, there are a few things that I want to still say in this lecture uh, about our uh, mathematical program for fleet assignment and also look at uh, the MIT mathematical program for fleet assignment. But uh, as of now, you are fully equipped to solve uh, all work. One, but uh, still to finish uh, this lecture and in particular also give you some more material if you do want to use uh, the MIT uh, program for fleet assignment, that's perfectly fine by me. And yeah, students do it from time to time. Some students uh, use the one from the book. Well, maybe they don't go to lectures or like it. Otherwise, some use from MIT, that's fine. But before that, uh, just a few notes about the model. So, uh, uh, yes, we have already solved the problem uh, where we looked at the issue with the objective function that it doesn't really capture everything uh, we could. Uh, yeah, so sometimes you have uh, too many people on the flight, uh, then you have to spill them out. That's the overbooking. We will have a separate, well, not full separate lecture, but the, the topic. Uh, so the important thing is that we, looking at the revenue, the CLF per leg or per link. While of course people are paying for the full itinerary, which consists from several links potentially. And so yeah, our program uh, is not capturing that. And there are also these things that are called through flights. Um, that's, uh, I don't know if they really do it in Europe. In the US they do do it, you know, the aircraft lands at a certain airport and people have to go out they do others just sit in the plane and then they the plane goes to the next ones like a shuttle or a bus uh, and uh, yes if you have uh, the through flight requirement that the certain two links have to be served by the same aircraft then of course they also have to be served by the same fleet type and you will have a, um, a problem on that in the homework one uh, actually, so I forgot to tell you, you would have seen it otherwise, but in homework one, uh, well, here it is, uh, you will uh, have to solve some problems directly from uh, the, yes, this one, from the MIT. Yes, I see somebody standing already there, so looking at this thing. Uh, you will have to solve problems from uh, MIT uh, class. It's good, you have enough uh, knowledge for that. But in particular, the, one of the problems is how to model this through flight uh, requirements. Yes, so there are other, yeah, the fuel management is not taken. There are a lot of things that are not taken into account in uh, our mathematical program, just returning to its shortcomings. Uh, yes, the constraints, uh, well, we never talked about maximum number of aircraft that, of certain fleet types that can stay in different airports, but well, problem 3A kind of looked at it, or that is generalization. So the aircraft routing, this is something which is completely omitted from the fleet assignment, and that's done on purpose. So what is aircraft routing? It's assigning the routes for particular aircraft. So you may have uh, several aircraft of certain fleet type, and uh, you may say, well, I want to serve this link, by this fleet type, also this link, by this fleet type, and all these links by this fleet type. 
but fleet assignment is oblivious to the actual aircraft of this fleet type that will serve the rules. And there is a separate problem called aircraft routing. We have a separate set of slides on it uh, to solve after fleet assignment is solved. So again, this is done on purpose, uh, just to split the problem into more solvable parts. Instead of from the very beginning trying to understand which particular aircraft you will assign to different links, you first decide the fleet type, and when that is done, you look at the aircraft route. Crew scheduling, again, it's a completely separate problem. It's not taken into account in the fleet assignment. After you've done the fleet assignment, you start assigning the crew. And we will have short lectures on both aircraft routing and crew scheduling uh, right after we are done with the fleet assignment, which one for a few weeks, given the, yeah, the Easter break and the solving homework one, but uh, the next lectures will be about uh, exactly these things. Ten minutes. Uh, right, so I was talking about model variations as we were developing the model, but also just to bring things up in a single place. Uh, there are different names for this network, time stage, expanded, and what's not. Uh, so we are using this something which can be called the ready time network. Sometimes it's called, well, I'm still using any of these uh, to, to describe the network. Yes, as we saw, the time can go horizontal or vertical. There can be many other things like these interconnection nodes and what's not. Uh, I'll again give you some examples. But just to mention the two important differences is uh, that we have one uh, network per fleet type. So we are not saying that, you know, directly from schedule you go to the fleet assignment mathematical problem. So you, from the schedule, we look at the network, separate network for each uh, fleet type, and then we do the fleet assignment. And I think it should be always implicit in all the uh, programs. And in fact, one of the problems on the homework is asking how you would take this into account. But we have very explicitly different networks uh, for different fleet types. And uh, the other important difference is that we didn't have ground arcs. Uh, Again, uh, in other fleet assignment programs, uh, they do have them. Uh, but we did have their own arcs, one per type. And uh, yeah. all fleet assignment uh, mathematical programs have their own arcs. And some have them per fleet type, some have them joint arcs. Yes, and here are some examples uh, yeah, from the textbook. Uh, there are some interconnection activity modeled by ground arcs. There are also these interconnection nodes. Uh, don't go into details uh, unless you really need, if you want the details there in the book. Yes, and this is uh, from the MIT uh, course, uh, in particular the ground arcs. Uh, and the remaining couple of slides will be about the MIT uh, mathematical program. So. Here is what they have. So we looked at how they uh, state uh, the general problem, well, reasonably uh, similar to what uh, we do with some minor differences. Now, how do they solve the problem? Well, they do have the network and then the fleet assignment mathematical program. And these are the things we will be looking at within the remaining seven minutes. So their network representation, uh, they have a topologically sorted timeline network. And uh, I'm glad we covered what topologically sorted means in uh, the block course, in the basic logistic algorithms. Topologically sorted means you have a directed acyclic graph. Okay, uh, I'm not sure whether they use uh, the topological sort, but uh, you will see how we will use it in aircraft routing. So yes, they have the same kinds of nodes, uh, the flight arrival and departure as uh, we have. Uh, now the arcs. They have one arc for, for each scheduled flight. And this not a banner is from me saying that, well, this is different from us. So we have different networks uh, for every scheduled flight. We have different networks for each fleet type. They have just a single arc. And they also have ground arcs, as I mentioned, that's uh, different from us. Constraints, uh, well, the first one, that each flight must be covered by exactly one fleet. We had that. This is our intergluing constraint. 
Uh, let me see just for fun if I can change the color of it. There it is. Yes, yeah, so, so we, we have that. The balance constraints, yeah, the aircraft arriving at a station must equal the number of aircraft departing. We have that. Check, same thing. Uh, aircraft count constraints, of course. Number of aircraft shouldn't exceed the number of available aircraft. We have that. So that's uh, the same. Uh, objective function. Well, they also have uh, this, well, they, they actually have exactly the same thing as we do. It's just that they have a different notation. So they are using K to represent fleet types and J to represent the legs. Well, I think that F is better for the fleet type and L is better for the leg or link. But uh, other than that, uh, it's all the same. So we have a cost associated with flying certain link with a certain fleet type. And uh, yeah. What did we capture? We might have captured different things. That doesn't matter. Uh, we have the same thing. The cost of flying a certain link with certain uh, fleet type. Decision variables. So these things, these are exactly our X L F equals one if certain fleet type is assigned to certain leg and zero otherwise. Ground darks. We don't have them. This is the time when we should say, yeah, that's great because they have triple indices for the ground dogs. It's good that we don't have them. Parameters. This one is the cost. That's what we have. Uh, I'm sorry, what I want to do is to erase this. This shouldn't be a check mark because we don't have that, but this, uh, this should be. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, no. Yes. Sorry, I messed up now. I don't know how to go back to the drawing. Uh, here it is. So check mark. We have that. We don't have this. We have the same costs for flying certain um, uh, leg with certain fleet type. We have the same thing: number of available aircraft. We don't have this counting time. Uh, the reason why they need the counting time is because they don't assume that all the aircraft stay on the ground at a certain time, like at 3 a.m. Again, you'll have a uh, homework problem on that. The set L, we don't have it explicitly, uh, but the set of all the arcs. Set of all fleet types we have, it's just that we call it F. It's better notation. Uh, set of all stations, we call it S, but we do have it. And uh, this thing we don't have, the set of all flight arcs. It's again, the, the, this is about the counting. So that's their notation, uh, if you care. And uh, the last but not least slide, uh, I apologize for the double numbering. So uh, this is from me and this is from the MIT. Uh, so uh, their objective function, exactly the same as ours. The costs of flying certain links by certain fleet types, types times the decision variable, whether we do or we do not fly. So that's the same. This is our gluing constraint. For any link, you want to sum up uh, the decision variables over the all fleet types and say that, well, use exactly one fleet type to cover that link. So this is exactly the same. Check, check. Uh, this thing, we don't have that. So this is where they are not just using the triple index for the ground darks, they're also using this minus and plus, so it's like a quadruple index. This is exactly what I wanted to avoid. So by saying that the number of aircraft on the ground, the variables on the ground darks is larger than zero, they do the same as we do with our non-negativity constraint, which in our case says, don't depart more aircraft than you have available. So uh, we don't have that, but we have it differently. And this one, I would put a check so this is the counting thing. So we don't have this counting of aircraft on the ground at certain time when you do the counting. We only doing this, we summing up all the aircraft over the fleet type for every station and saying that that shouldn't exceed the total number of aircraft of this fleet type that we have available. So that's the check. Okay, uh, looks like perfect timing. It's uh, three uh, and uh, we are at the end of the slides.
I will stop the recording and will remain here maybe for 30 seconds to take 